slow down or stop. And that's how they ski. Now, can you imagine how many have ever gone skiing? I did once. That was enough. I was young and crazy. But I didn't do it no more. And I, I thought, as I read that story about that man, watching these blind skiers, and he said there was quite a few of them there. And he, they, each one of them had a guide. And they would go down and ride these skis. And I thought of a verse of scripture and I wrote it down. Psalm 73, 24. And it says, you shall guide me with thy counsel. Being guided is a great thing. Amen. Especially when God guides you. But these <laughs> skiers, I, can you imagine? I, I can't even picture it. To see these going down, and they were on both sides of him. And he said they were skiing better than he was. He said, I was trying to dodge things in the way. He said they didn't even see him. The guy would tell them to go right or left. And they would miss them. Can you imagine closing your eyes and letting God guide you through life? Telling you, there's a rock ahead, or there's a tree ahead. Or there's a problem that you need to get away from. Think about it. Think of it. You know, that doesn't have a whole lot to do with what I'm going to minister on tonight, but we need to have God to teach us. There's a scripture that tells us that David asked God, he said, teach me. Teach me, Lord, thy way. That's what we need to pray about continually. Now in 1 Thessalonians, the fourth chapter. You got it? It's in the New Testament, page 1125. <laughs> the 16th verse says, For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God, and the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with Him in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore, comfort one another with these words. We need to read these words continually. Then we need to comfort one, uh, one another with them. He said that the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Ever be with the Lord. There's a lot of Christian groups that have different uh, aspects of these things in the last times and everything. But it's plain. It's plain. Someday the Lord's going to come back the eastern skies are going to split wide open. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. And it says that we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with him. Yes, if you read 1 Corinthians uh, 11, uh, 15th chapter, it tells us that we shall be changed from mortal to immortal. It said immortality will become immortal. We'll be changed in the twinkling of an eye. We'll be different. We won't have this body that we have now. This body is going to be changed. Then yes, it says that we will ever be with the Lord. But the truth uh, in the church has a, a glorious and a victorious ending. We're going to be with the Lord forever. We're going to reign with Him. Amen. We're going to have a future world in the air. Amen? Amen. And <clears throat> as we live in this life, though, uh, from the day of Pentecost, when the Holy Ghost came upon those that were there and started leading them and started guiding 
the Christian world as today, things in this world have changed. And it says that the Christians that left there on the day of Pentecost turned the world upside down. Just those few, the 120 that came out of that room, they traveled, they spread, then they spread the gospel of Jesus Christ. And it said that the world was turned upside down at that time. But have you noticed lately how the world is changing? Right. There are people, this church should be full tonight. The church across the street should be full. I noticed the one down the street here has got quite a few cars in the parking lot. Praise the Lord. We've got more here tonight than I thought there would be. I thought Beverly and I and Brother and Sister Elkins would be here. Maybe Carol and maybe Richard. Richard's not here. But we're here. Amen? And we're here for a reason. Because God put us here. But it says that the church to gain what the Lord said here, that or what Paul said through the Lord, the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which remain in our life, uh, which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. But to get that, we first of all have to get together and do the work because it tells us in the Word in 1 Corinthians 3 and 9 that we labor together. Yes. And we have to labor in the Word of God. We have to go forth and to bring forth the Word of God to the world. But today the church isn't even interested. So how can the world be interested? Yeah. Amen? Yeah. It's better to stay home. Uh, we could have stayed home and watched the ball game maybe. But no, the, I guess the Yankees and the Astros are playing on it to see who's going to go into the World Series. But they were rained out tonight. Praise the Lord. Maybe that cost some of you to come to church. <laughs> no, we were too interested in other things. Well, I can't, I can't go to church on Wednesday night because, uh, Pastor, things just... I've got things to do at home. Wednesday night is my night to relax. And I can relax and watch TV. Or I can relax and I have a hobby that I need to do and I can do that on Wednesday night. I'll be there Sunday morning though. Then they show up Sunday morning. Then Sunday night comes. Can't make it Sunday night. And I, you know, we went out for dinner or lunch this afternoon and I ate too much and now my belly's too full and I can How'd you like to walk around with this belly? <laughs> Brother Anderson's saying his is bigger than mine. <laughs> but we have too many excuses to be in church. But he says that we need to labor together. We need to work together. Amen. Paul said that we need to run the race. Amen. Amen? Amen. Jesus said that we need to wage war. Think about that. Ephesians, the sixth chapter, tells us that we need to put on the armor of God yes. because we are in a warfare. We are fighting a battle. We have the breastplate of righteousness. We have the, the belt of truth. We're shod, amen, with the shoes <laughs> of peace. But we carry the sword. Amen? Amen? And we have a shield. That shield of faith that we need to put on. We need to put it on daily. Amen. We need, And we've got a helmet to protect our head. Some of us have a soft head. So we have to have protection. But as we put on all that armor, we find out that there's nothing behind us. He didn't say to put on any armor behind us. Nothing to protect our back. But we're not to turn around. We're to face the enemy. Amen? Amen? Amen. 
and we'll come out victorious because we have the ending of the story in this book. And it tells me that the army of God wins. Yes, but he tells us that we need to emerge triumphant. We need to gather together. We need to join forces. I think about the Holy Ghost as a, a weapon. A weapon to fight sin with. Jesus gave us the Holy Ghost that He will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance. He is our guide. Jesus went to be with the Father. He left us a comforter, which is the Holy Ghost. The Holy Ghost is our power. The Holy Ghost is our weapon to fight sin with. And you take a soldier, you train him. He's willing to fight. He's willing to stand up for what is right. And he goes out into the field. And he goes out without a weapon. He'll fight, but how long is he going to stand? Think about it. But if you give him a weapon to go out, our weapon, like I said, is the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. Our weapon is the Word of God. Mm -hmm. This is our sword. The Holy Ghost is our power. Amen. Amen. Amen? And if we go out with the sword and the power, then we have our shield of faith to, fight, to ward off the, the darts that are coming at us of evil. Amen? We can fight. Yes. We need to prepare ourselves. We need to get out and make ourselves ready. He didn't say that somebody's going to dress you. David when David went out to fight Goliath, Solomon, or I'm sorry, Saul, said, here, take my armor. Well, Saul was like this. David was like this. It'd be our brother back here like him wearing my clothes. Amen? Wouldn't that be kind of funny? He put his armor on David. I bet David couldn't even hardly walk. It was so heavy. Mm -hmm. David said, I don't need your armor. He said, I've got God to go out there yeah, with yeah. me to fight that battle. Yeah. You can't use somebody else's armor. You've got to use what God gave you. David said, I go out in the power. In the power of the God of Israel. He said, and here, I'm telling you, you're talking about an army. The army of God at that time, Israel, out there to fight the Philistines, and they were out hiding behind rocks. And they're out there looking. The Philistines sent out that giant. Said, send out your bravest man to fight him. If he wins, you've won the battle. But if the giant wins, we've won the battle. And we'll control you the rest of your lives. Here old David come hopping down. And he looked around. What he was doing was bringing his brother some lunch. And he said, well, what are you guys hiding for? And here this giant standing down there waiting for somebody to come down and face him. David looked and Saul, I, I can imagine Saul sending one of his soldiers out to grab David to bring him in behind the rocks. David said, I'm not hiding. I picture all this in my mind. This is the way I look at it. That David just stood there and he looked at that giant and he didn't see nothing any bigger than he was. Amen? Amen? Because he was looking through the eyes of God. Amen. And he told them, he said, God is stronger than any of this. He said, he helped me kill the lion. He helped me kill the bear. He said, why can't we take care of that Philistine? Yeah. And he said, none of you guys want to go down there? 
-hmm. He said, King Saul, I'll go. I'll go. That's what we need to do when God says something has to be done. Yes. We need to say, God, I'll go. Mm -hmm. I'll do what I have to do. I'll take care of the problem. Lord, because I know that at the end of this thing, says I'm going to join you because it said, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. Mm -hmm. So when it's all over with, and I've done my serving you, Lord, and I've done what you wanted me to do, Lord, and I had the power because the power came from you, and I destroyed the enemy, I'm going to meet you, Lord. I'm going to meet you. We have to work toward that. We have to look at it. So David went out there. He didn't have no weapon to fight with except his little sling that he used to kill things. And then, you know, if the wolves come around or bears or lions, God gave him an accurate art to do what he needed to do. He went over and he found five smooth stones. You know what? He only had to use one of them. One of them went right here. And that giant hit the ground. Can you imagine what the army of the Philistines felt like when that little guy walked out there and that big guy fell over? Then on top of it, the Bible says that David took the giant sword. Now that thing had to weigh a little bit. Brother James, I, I, I think it had been a struggle. But David picked it up. And he cut the giant's head off. When he cut the giant's head off, the Bible says he picked it up. He carried it. Carried it into the city to show the power of God. Not the power of David, but the power of God. Amen. 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 What was David's reward? David eventually became king. Ruler of Israel. God's people. <clears throat> Not because of him killing a giant but because of him serving God. But there's a future in the church afterwards. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Says we'll reign with the Lord forever. We'll see things that are not for the natural eye to see because we'll be in the Spirit. Says we'll be incorruptible. We won't have this old body that gets wore out. Amen. Brother Al, like we were talking, you know, can't walk ten steps without huffing and puffing. Amen? We're going to have a victorious body. Amen. And we're going to reign with Him forever. Amen. says we'll be like as He is. So how is He? He was changed. He was transformed. The disciples saw Him walking with them after he was crucified, after he was buried. Then he was resurrected and he walked with his disciples. Said he spent 40 days doing things. Many people saw him. But he had a body incorruptible. Amen? Amen. He went to be with the Lord, to be on the, uh, God's right hand. But we need to understand that there are things that we need to do. We need to wage war against sin. But the world today, the Christians, are accepting things that are not of God. Amen. We've allowed prayer to be taken out of the schools. Look what's happened. You never heard of the things that were happening now that you did 50 years ago or whenever they took prayer out. I remember going to school when I was, I did go to school. But I, I remember when I went to school that we would, first thing, 
say a prayer than do the Pledge of Allegiance. They do neither one now. Now they've taken God out of the Pledge of Allegiance. If anybody does it, think about it. When you've removed God from things, it falls apart. It falls apart. There are people out there today. I just read in Orange County, a boy walked into school with a gun. Thank God, the classmates jumped in and took the gun away from him. Surprised him before he could do anything. It's happening everywhere. They said, well, how did he get a gun in school? <coughs> there are ways. If you want to do something, you can do it. The devil, devil will open the door for anything that's not good. But the Bible says in 1 John, the fourth chapter, greater is he yes, amen. that is in you than he that is in the world. Amen. 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 We have home invasions. We have, right now, coming up, the holidays are coming up. First we have Thanksgiving, then we have Christmas. Two times, two times in the year that Satan tries to take control of everything is when we celebrate the birth of Christ and when we celebrate the death and resurrection of Christ. You see more robberies. You see, I, I had a friend of mine here at Christmas a few years ago. She was window shopping. And a guy grabbed her purse. And she hung on to the purse. He drug her through the parking lot, kicked her numerous times, broke her jaw, broke two of her ribs. She was black and blue all over. He ended up getting her purse, and she had just gotten paid, and then she had something like 400 and something dollars in her purse. She lost everything. Plus, went to the hospital. Plus, had to have her jaw fixed. Had ribs, and she couldn't go to work. She lost out on work. It's unbelievable what things the devil does. Yeah, they allow it. We need to pray. We need to pray. Amen. We need to, to know that... Uh, I told you a story here some time back about a man named Michael Angelo. He was a sculptor. He made statues. He built, built many statues, something like 40 or 50 statues. But he only completed 14 of them because he was trying to work all of them together. When your mind goes in different directions, you can't accomplish greatness. Your mind has to be stayed on one thing. And if it's stayed on God totally, and our Lord Jesus Christ, and we follow in His footsteps, we cannot go wrong. Amen. We cannot go astray. God will take care of all your problems. You say, yeah, but look at me. Well, I'm, I look at you, but let God look at you. God sees something in you more than I could. I can look at each one of you that's in this building tonight and I can find fault. You can look at me and realize I'm perfect, right? No, I bet you, I bet each one of you have a different fault that you can find in me. But God looks at us and He looks beyond the faults. And he sees our needs. Amen. But he sees what we can be. Amen. That's the thing. Look at David again. He was ready. He was little. He had different things. Wrong. But God said, hey, I've got something for you to do. Yes, amen. David said, okay, Lord. 
I don't care. Amen? We need to understand that no matter how big, how small, how smart, how dumb, we can still serve God. The Bible, 66 books in the Bible, 35 different writers. They stem from fishermen to scholars. Even doctors. Said Luke was a doctor. He wrote Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John in the book of Acts. Think about that. Five books in the Bible that are great, written by a doctor. Then we've got Peter, poor fisherman. He wrote three books of the Bible. James and John. Then we've got those in the Old Testament. Women, Ruth and Esther. Well, women aren't smart enough to write nothing. Women can't be serving God like men can. Why not? Day of Pentecost, Peter said, quoted scripture from Malachi, said that your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Mm -hmm. Your sons, what is prophecy? Ministering, preaching, bringing forth the word of God. Amen. 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 That's what we're to do. We're to mind the word of God. Amen. We're to follow the word of God. So we have Ruth and Esther. We have men like Jonah that talked about a big fish. But it was enough. Enough of God that Jonah wrote it for our benefit. But from Genesis to Revelation, it is written from the Old Testament up to Christ, the New Testament, the life of Christ, His death, His resurrection, and beyond into Revelations to tell us what we're looking forward to. Amen? No contradictions anywhere. But there are people that are trying to change the Word of God. They want to make it fit their lifestyle. They want to make it fit the things that they do. I can, uh, I can tell you that I am blessed because I belong to the Lord. Amen. The Word tells me in Leviticus that the fact belongs to the Lord. So I belong to the Lord. I can make it say what I want it to. Amen. Beverly, behave yourself. We can do whatever. We can say whatever. But if it doesn't line up with the Word of God, it's a waste. Amen. 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 We need to get prayer. Our prayer time should be continuous. Right. Paul said, pray always. He said to pray in the Spirit. Pray for one another. Like I said, if you can't find something to pray about, here I am. Pray for me. I need all I can get. God knows I need it. Especially after today. I went to the DMV this morning and didn't get out of there until well in the afternoon. And boy, I'm very patient when it comes to waiting in line and doing things, but my goodness, I think today my patience kind of wore out. So we need to pray for one another. We need to love one another. And we need to lift one another up. And he said, with these words, with these words, we can do it. And then let's stand as you would.
Oh, 